Hello, I'm Yang Rui, and nice to see you again. On October the 22nd, the Chinese poet Li Shizheng, who goes by the pen name Duo Duo, was awarded the 2010 New Start International Prize for Literature. Duo Duo was the first Chinese author to become a New Start laureate. Many who have won the prize have gone on to win Nobel prizes for literature. This is undoubtedly good news for Chinese poets, and has, in a certain degree, proved the view German sinologist Wolfgang Kubin has long held: Chinese poetry stands out of contemporary Chinese literature. Professor Kubin, with the University of Bonn, has been known for his critical views of the Chinese literature, and we had the opportunity to interview him during his participation in the first Nishan Forum on World Civilizations in late September. During this interview, he once again spoke frankly on contemporary Chinese literature, and Dialogue is happy to share it with you today. But first, let's take a look at this Professor Kubin's profile. Wolfgang Kubin is a professor of sinology at the University of Bonn. He has written numerous essays on modern Chinese literature and criticism. In November 2006, he attracted a great deal of attention due to an interview he gave with German broadcaster Duschwell regarding contemporary Chinese literature, most of which he denounced in harsh terms. When asked for his view of the so-called girl writers like Mian Mian and Wei Hui, Kubin bluntly said their works were trash. Kubin also referred to Zhang Rong's best-selling social allegory *Wolf Totem* as fascist. Slammed the Chinese Writers Association as serving no purpose whatsoever, and said of the Nobel Prize for Literature, "If you write well, you will never win it." However, while criticizing a large chunk of post-World War II Chinese authors as insignificant, Kubin defended the integrity of contemporary Chinese poets such as Ouyang Jianghe, Xi Chuan, and Jia Yongming. Kubin has also expressed his admiration for Lu Xun, and says no contemporary author can compare to him. The subsequent reporting of the Duschwell interview, which Kubin claimed was a distortion of his words, spread to the mainstream Chinese media and inspired a flurry of comments from internet readers. Still, it seems that the controversy has not caused Kubin to tone down his stance. Kubin is also a published poet and has been lauded for his translation work. Welcome to Dialogue, sir. Hello. Why and when did you show your clear interest in Mandarin, the Chinese language? Very late. Very late. Very late, yes. Because I'm not a typical, as we say in English and German, sinologue. I'm more a philosopher. I'm more a theologian. And finally, I ended up as a literatus, as a Wenren, as we say in Chinese, interested in, in literature. And my when you describe yourself, first of all, as a philosopher instead of uh, being a, a, an avid student of a Chinese language, Li Bai, which seems to be the very first、uh, beginning of your serious interest in the Chinese language and right, indeed the Chinese、yes. literature,、yeah. he is pretty romantic. His、uh, his wild thoughts、uh, in his poems、uh, are very different from a philosophical style, particularly that of a Germany. Right. In my eyes, he's not a romantic. In my eyes, he's a drunkard and a priest, a Taoist priest. But at、uh, what we in German call high school, my favorite topic was、uh, philosophy. And when I went to university, I studied theology, and I discovered that I could not bear this modernized form of theology. I got to know at the end of the sixties in Germany, and because I had started learning a lot of. Different languages. I went on learning a lot of different languages at university, and、uh, finally I came across an English translation and a German translation of Li Bai.、Mm -hmm. And then, by、I、the way, he's a poet, oh, the greatest poet of the Tang Dynasty. Not for sure. Might be Du Fu is better, but this is up to、uh, to discussion. Well, when I came across. The translation of his poetry in, in English or might be even German. I thought, why not study classical Chinese? 
at the end of the 60s in Germany, it was only possible to learn classical Chinese and not modern Chinese at all. And so besides a lot of different languages, I also started in 67 probably to learn a little bit classical Chinese. And in 68, I went on learning modern Japanese and modern Chinese in Vienna. You are the translator of many essays by Lu Xun. I'd like to have your thoughts about Lu Xun, uh, whose style or satirical style uh, served as um, a very critical voice in the darkest days of Chinese politics uh, uh, in the early days of the last century. You must know that the influence of Lu Xun in uh, Germany is very great and that he is one of the most uh, beloved uh, foreign authors and that our greatest uh, German writers are writing things according to him, according to his style. And my understanding of uh, Lu Xun is quite different from the party's understanding. I see in him a very modern writer who knew that modernity will bring people a lot of pains. So if you read carefully his works, you will discover that one of his favorite words is boring, wu liao. And from the history of melancholy in Europe scene, you will discover that modernity and melancholy cannot be separated from each other. And this is the main problem of modernity. Modernity allows everyone to be very free, but as soon as someone is very free, someone feels very, very lonesome and is unable to over overcome lonesomeness. And this is one of the reasons why China already in the 30s didn't want modernity anymore and why the writers uh, try to give up modernity. And the same is true for Germany in the 30s and 40s. What do you think of the role of uh, Confucianism in shaping Chinese literature, particularly uh, the present-day Chinese literature? Uh, what are the things you are not happy about? I do not think that uh, Chinese literature can be changed by Confucianism at all. But there's one point. From Confucius to Su Dongpo, mm -hmm. we do find in China people who raise their voices in public and are not afraid of being victims of suppression. And they are prepared to sacrifice themselves. But this kind of spirit you do not find in China anymore. Nowadays, Writers, intellectuals, scholars, they enjoy life and uh, they live sometimes as comfortable as the people in the West. And they then it gives rise to the question of how to define an intellectual. What's an intellectual your is, a, is someone who dares to speak and who is about to sacrifice everything. What about the true literature? What, in your mind, is a true literature? Well, it depends. I have to confess, as you, I am also of the opinion that the 80s were a very, very rich time in uh, cultural terms. Heated discussions, people were not interested in material things at all, and uh, anyone was talking about the future of China. And uh, we had a very, very rich literature which, of course, from today's point of view, might be problematic as for style, which I now propose is the most important thing of, uh, of a writer. Mm -hmm. In the 80s, I paid more attention to the content, to what the writers had to say, to tell. And there's a difference uh, to be made between to tell and to show. Nowadays I would say that a good writer shows, but he does not tell. It means a writer who tells you, he tells you the content of what he's writing about. But a writer who shows 
something to you, does not tell you what the content is. Through his style, he hints at certain points. Why were you impressed by the contents of the Chinese literature in the early 1980s? Because they told us the truth of what we believed in before. And so this was some kind of a revolution. So but it's now, a kind of a wake-up call. You can tell it so, right, yes. It was poor in style, but still it was a wake-up call, and we could reflect what we thought about China, both the foreigners and the Chinese themselves. You know, we call the Chinese literature in the early 1980s the style of a scar literature. Why? It's only one part. There's only one much part. more, because there's a very important women's literature which was, which was turned down in, early, in, 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 in 83. 83, it was turned down, and then you have no women's literature at all in China anymore. You mean ever since then we do not have serious uh, feminism in the literature? Uh, not anymore. Up till 83, you had some kind of serious feminism. Might be there are still some feminists on the mainland, but they are not writing literature anymore. Who is to blame for the lack of uh, feminism or lack of a uh, critical spirit in Chinese literature, the system or the market? The authors, the writers. Usually you expect me to answer the system or the market. I do not do you this favor. The, right, the Chinese writers destroyed and destroy Chinese literature. It's them themselves. But they are the contents provider, and they have to follow the law of supply and demand. From the supply side, yes, of course, uh, they, let, they let you down. But from the demand side, uh, readers and the viewers expect to have the secular stuff, so very cheap, commercially driven, very entertaining. It's show, it's not tell. No thoughts, no serious ideas, but only sensationalism, right? Yes, I'm a writer myself. I write poetry, essays and novels, and I don't care for the market. I don't care for any demand. The only demand I have is my own demand or the demand of my inner voice. Okay, thank you very much. We have to leave you there for the moment. You are watching Dialogue with Professor Wolfgang Kubin from Bonn University. We are happy to interview him during his participation at the Nishan Forum on World Civilizations. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Welcome back, sir. Why do you always listen to yourself from the inner core that comes from within? I think any true writer did this in the past, or even does it in the present. And I'm sure that uh, Li Bai and Su Dongpo and Lu Xuan listened just as I hope I do so to their inner voices. And they knew what they had to do to serve literature and to sacrifice themselves for literature, for good literature, of course, and not for the market. The market, if you want to be famous today, fine, but you will be dead tomorrow. And if this is your choice, just forget writing. But China is currently at the stage of uh, economic transformation and uh, our livelihoods and the inner being seem to be increasingly subject to the whims of the market forces. And I hate the market. You hate the market? Yes, of course. Because you are in Germany, and Germany is such an industrial and developed no, nation. A writer is a in writer. China, we no, live for bread no, and butter. We no, have to entertain no, ourselves no, 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 by no. appealing no. to the Your hearts writers, of the readers, not the minds of the readers like you. No, 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 no. no. Writers earn millions. Millions. The best uh, 20. Chinese writers earn one million euro a year, at least, one million. I never do this, never. And in Germany, you do not have writers who earn so much money here as here in China. We have different schools of literature, the popular school, the classical school, the serious ones, and the very entertaining ones. Right. Perhaps you would prefer to enjoy the serious literature, yes, of course. Uh, emphasizing on contents and ideas instead of uh, things that are like uh, love, um, fictional right. detective Boy stories. Right, girl, how boring. Mm -hmm. Boring. 
born. So you are German. You are not the typical reader. I'm in this respect. I'm not German. In this respect, I'm true. You are true to yourself. You are true, true to your to faith. Literature. You are true to literature. And true But to good Chinese writers. We have different definitions and inter interpretations about what uh, should be defined as a literature, don't we? We make a difference in uh, Germany be between earnest literature, uh, serious literature, and uh, what is called um, entertainment literature. And uh, the United States do not have this anymore. And uh, China, of course, now has, in most cases, only entertainment literature and no serious literature except for the poets. You still have a dozen of uh, great poets, but they are not regarded as uh, belonging to literature. Why do you say, other than poems and the poetry in Chinese literature, all others can be uh, discarded as no, no, cheap no. stuff? No, I, I never did so. You never said so? No, I never said so. But uh, the problem is uh, much more complicated because uh, be it America, be it Germany, be it China, literature that is the novel, the novel that is literature. That means anyone who writes poems or essays or dramas is not counted as a writer anymore. You have to write a long novel and that's literature. Literature that's a long novel. but. I am not conf convinced by Chinese or American long novels. They bore me to death. But still you have, of course, some very good writers, even among uh, the novelists in the 90s. But uh, they are also not really making money. They are a minority. But you have at least a, a dozen uh, poets who are very, very successful, for instance, in Germany. For their uh, conditions, they sell very well in Germany. I'm coming to understand what you are driving at. I'm coming to terms with uh, your understanding about uh, what is typical and good Chinese literature. L let's go back to the early days of the U.S. history, like uh, Mark Twain, Jack London, Ernest Hemingway, do you call them good writers? Yes, of course. Because of their soul-searching stuff in the novels and the short stories? They have a language of their own. They have their ideology of their own. And they are able to create an, a form of their own. And if you pay attention to the market, it's impossible. You have to follow the language, the form, and the demands that is the ideology of, of the markets. I never want to sell more than 10,000 books. It seems you are living in the 19th century yes, instead of, of the 21st Why century. Why not? Why not? Why not? But we are making progress socially no, no, and economically. Is not, this, is, this is no progress at all. This you are pro against the history. You are no, every no, bit no, no, against no, no, history. No. no. The way we head on is a way into death. Perhaps you are a little bit too pessimistic no, about uh, just the real latest real. developments no, in the humanities. To, I don't want to betray myself, and this is the reason why I think that we have to come back to Confucius, because he was asked what is the right development of a society, and he, asked, he answered it must be a slow development, and you should not pay too much attention to small profit. And be it Germany or America or China, at present, our development is too quick. We appreciate deeply your freedom of conscience and the conscience as a serious uh, critic of Chinese literature. However, I remember you, you said out of disillusionment that if you give up studying Chinese literature, no one else in Germany would do that. It means, it means, let me finish, your opinions about Chinese literature would seriously shape the public perceptions about what is going on in the literary world of China. If you say there is nothing serious in our literature, then it gives people the strong feeling that literature in China is nothing. Is that a responsible way of answering uh, questions and the curiosities from the general public in your country and indeed in Europe at large? You make the same mistake again that anyone who is talking with me makes. 
What There's is it? Great literature in China. There is great literature. Great poetry, but only poetry, nothing else. Some novels, but they are the minority. I never said that if I give up studying literature in Germany, Chinese literature has no future in Germany. What I meant was, when I give up studying, translating, introducing, analyzing modern and contemporary Chinese literature, there will be at present no follower. The critics, the real critics, it's not me. The real critics are the Chinese intellectuals. The real critics are the German Sinologues, and they are more critical than me. And in Germany, there's no one among the intellectuals, among the writers, among the professors who reads contemporary Chinese long novels. And those in Germany or in German-speaking countries who should introduce contemporary Chinese literature do nothing. They do, do not even receive all those writers who come to Bonn to meet me. I introduce them to a greater public. They say, I don't want to waste my time with them. So the real critics, their voices you never hear, they decide everything. It's not me because I'm always introducing the best voices of China to the public in German-speaking countries, always. But in doing so, do you feel lonely? No, never. Never? Never. Why? Because uh, I have among the Chinese uh, scholars and uh, especially among the poets uh, great friends who are smarter than me and I learn from them. Why do you think uh, Chinese poems uh, could deliver a stronger voice about what literature is in the present-day China? At least they have a voice in Germany, and uh, these poets uh, is, are speaking in very complicated voices. And we Germans are tired of all these simple voices from the United States, declaring us something we uh, already know. And what we need are complicated voices, because this world is so complicated that we do not understand this world anymore. What do you mean by sophistication and complexity of poems? Well, in my Let's eyes... Let's go deeper a little bit. Yes, of course. In my eyes, the only truth you can hear in China is what is written in the works of uh, the Chinese poets. If you seek truth, you have to read uh, contemporary Chinese poetry because they cannot sell their works so they cannot pay attention to the market. And because they write so complicated, no one understands them. Really, no one. You know what I mean. So they can't publish anything. Mm -hmm. And they, the publishing houses are not going to skip anything away from their poems. Do you think uh, the rise of uh, Chinese poetry has a lot to do with the faith and beliefs. Yes, uh, with faith in humanity, in the human being, in the strength of a person which tries to survive as a real human person which does not subdue to the market and to the demands of the market because the market is producing people and these people do not know who they are. It seems that poets uh, do not have a happy end about their life. Uh, neither did many of the European and American writers uh, have. Ernest Hemingway committed suicide. Jake London I killed never himself. Commit suicide. You would never. Why? Never. Because you, I have faith. You have faith. And I have a duty. What's your duty? To introduce China to Germany and Europe. You are not so disappointed. You still want to introduce China to the rest of the world. I will go on for what? the rest of my life. What are the inspirations behind your uh, pursuit? The of beauty of classical Chinese uh, language, the beauty of classical Chinese uh, prose, Sanwen, and the beauty of classical Chinese poetry. So you believe China is not understood perfectly and in fact our country has been misunderstood and it's your duty to present a real China to the rest of the world? I don't dare to say that I'm able to present a, a real China. 
I'm for sure repre uh, representing my China. And it's your duty to ask if this China is the China you want to re present it to Germany. China is described uh, as, uh, by the Western media as the communist regime, which emphasizes so much on the importance of uh, collectivism, statism, um, even in their words, a tyranny of uh, high-handed policies in many areas. We don't have uh, freedom of this, freedom of that. So we live like uh, uh, clay warriors in Bing Ma Yong, Xi'an. I mean, is that the demonized image of China? But this is not my image of China at all. Just the opposite, you have too much liberty, too much freedom. Thank you very much.